I thought I'd do a quick update on the Geo Air greenhouse. First of all, in a nutshell, I'm very, very pleased with what we're doing here and what I'm learning. I know a lot of people are asking all the time for updates on the Geo Air greenhouse and to send out the blueprints and the, all the materials list and so forth. I have not gone through a 12 month period in this greenhouse. So I will not release the data until I have really good data because what I'm all about is doing the work, spending the time, spending the money, my time, my money, my work, and saving you time, money, and work. Until I've got good data, I can't send this out. So I'm still constantly testing and tweaking and analyzing and trying to determine the optimal situation for a greenhouse of this design. One of those tests is uh, the blower for the Geo Air tubes. As you can see, I have a one-third horsepower furnace blower that I got at no cost from a heating and air conditioning company locally. This seems to be working quite well. You can see I've got a kilowatt meter on here and a timer and a couple wires in there. The different colored wires indicate the different settings for the fan. Here if I have the red wire plugged in I'm pulling 2.03 amps, the blue wire 2.25 amps and the yellow wire 3.25 one six amps as you can see right now I'm using the blue wire which is the medium speed for this blower which seems to be working the best not moving too much air too fast so it's not getting warmed up but still moving enough air to warm the greenhouse this has not been put into a box I need to do that and build a manifold right now this is blowing air I would rather pull air but uh, these really aren't designed for pulling so more to come on that but this is absolutely working well as you can see here on the screen where I have uh, sustained temperatures all through the night between typically 49 and 51 degrees which is exactly what we wanted to do which shows that the theory in principle really works we are blowing warm air into a cold greenhouse at night right now I have this on a timer that it starts at 5 p.m. and goes until 10 a.m. I will get this on a thermostat and test the thermostat. I'm always testing, 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 and uh, I don't mind doing that on my time and my dime so I can save you time and money. Over here on the opposite end of the manifold, you can see I have my tubes. They're just kind of laying out here. I'm testing different heights. Uh, these tubes, once they are uh, installed, will be probably about three to four feet above the ground and be wrapped in insulation. You can also see I have thermometers here from two different manufacturers giving me two different readings so I can compare readings. It doesn't do any good if you have data if you don't have anything to compare it to. So this one over here uh, gives me an update every 10 minutes on my phone or on the internet so I can track it. Right now it's showing that the temperature is uh, 71.1 degrees and the humidity is also up in the 70s. These have wires that go about three, four feet down into the tube so I can get a good tube reading. This is the thermostat in the center of the greenhouse on the center T-frame. I get data from this thermometer, the thermometer in the tubes, and the thermometer outside on the garden shed. So I'm able to compare inside, outside, and tube temperature 24-7. Uh, the end that you see here in this footage is facing east, and so behind me is west. So this wall here is on the north side, and this wall over here is on the south side. So on the north wall, I was noticing it is substantially colder than the south wall. And so I took two layers of one inch styrofoam and put those up there in between the plastic and the PVC pipe. And that brought the temperature. So at night when it's really cold outside, it is 27 degrees warmer in the greenhouse. I've been monitoring that for a couple weeks now and it's pretty consistent. The colder the temperature, the warmer it is in here as far as the spread goes. 27 degrees warmer in the greenhouse is great if you're 10 degrees or 15 degrees temperature outside. But once you start getting into zero degrees and minus eight degrees, which is what we've had here in the last few weeks, 27 degree difference is not gonna cut it. But the problem here is that the warm air coming in from the geo air tubes is going through the two layers of plastic. So I have ordered more styrofoam and I will add more styrofoam insulation in here on the north side 
and see if I can't increase the insulation of the greenhouse. Basically what I'm trying to do is build a thermos or a, a ice chest with good insulation so the nice warm air that's coming from the geo air tubes has enough insulation in the greenhouse to keep the greenhouse warm. Until then, I've set up a place where I can put in a propane heater. You see I've got the propane line coming in and where I'll mount the propane heater. Uh, I will have this as a security blanket and will turn on when the temperature gets below 40 degrees. You may have noticed the citrus trees as I walked down the aisle. This one was dropped off at our greenhouse. I don't know who dropped off, so thank you very much. Uh, we are taking care of it. It was absolutely covered in aphids, as you can see on some of these leaves. So I've been hand washing the aphids off. The plant's in good health. Uh, we've gave it the mint light a weekly feed and pre-plant nutrient mixes, and we are watering it. So that is coming back strong. Here we have our second lime tree, and over here we have a grapefruit tree. These will be all going into the citrus greenhouse next spring. A few weeks ago I planted about 120 sugar snap peas. We absolutely love sugar snap peas. And we've got germination. Those are sown directly into the soil here. We did not germinate these in our basement like we have with other plants. So in a, probably another couple of weeks we will be adding the twine so that the plants can climb up and uh, grow properly. In a few minutes my wife will be coming out here with the plants that she has germinated in our basement and we will be transplanting those into the greenhouse today. You can see I've already added the Midlighter weekly feed and the pre-plant to the soil and I am turning it into the soil. Once we get it turned in and screed so it's level again, we'll mark the bed and transplant the plants. As I'm turning the soil mix to mix the nutrients into the soil, what did I come across? But several earthworms. Why are the earthworms here? Well, because there's food, nutrition, water, everything here. I'm just going to take a second on this and just tell you I'm using sawdust and sand because it's cheap and it's clean. You can fill this box with dirt. You can fill it with coconut core and sand. You can fill it with peat moss. You can fill it with whatever kind of custom mix you want to use. It makes very little difference. I just will tell you, I do not use compost, I do not use mulch because I don't need to and neither do you. I am not building soil, I am growing food. All the nutrients I put into the soil are being taken up by the plants. So I'm not depleting the soil from the nutrients because I'm putting in what the plants are taking out. So I put in as much as they're taking out and the soil remains as it is. As I continue to use the soil year to year and I turn the organic matter from the plants, the roots and so forth back into the soil at the end of the season, it will add more organic matter to the soil. But please do not spend a lot of money on dirt. Dirt for your garden should be dirt cheap. We can discuss more of this and other topics on my webinar on December 29th, 2015. I'll have a link to that video and where you can register for that free webinar. And you are more than welcome to use compost, mulch, manure, whatever you want, fish emulsion, seaweed extract, we've done all that and we found it made very little difference and was more detrimental to us growing food than giving the plants the nutrients that they need in the right ratios and the right amounts by using the Midlighter weekly feed and pre-plant nutrient mix. In my opinion it doesn't make any difference what kind of soil you have or how you're getting the nutrients to the plants whether it's the Midlighter weekly feed or doing it organically through composting and mulch. The only thing that you need to do is make sure that you're getting the plants all 16 nutrients that they need in the right amounts and the right ratios. And if you can guarantee that with compost, mulch, manure, seaweed extract, fish emulsion, and so forth, that's great. You'll we'll spend a fortune doing that like we have. Or you can do it quick and easy, give the plants all that they need using the Midlight Weekly Feed. I'll have more links about that if you're new to that concept, but it is most economical, easiest, highest production and highest nutrient dense food we have ever grown having grown food organically for over 30 years here's my wife using the midlighter gardening tool marker to mark out a bed this is where the garden's going to go you can see in just a few seconds she's got eight feet garden marked on both sides very easy to use here she's marked the area where she's planting the lettuce and the spinach and then she just put down the plants that she had germinated 
downstairs under grow lights in our basement. She's done the same with the cauliflower and the broccoli next to the existing Swiss chard that we planted last January 25th. And then over here, she spaced out the cabbages too. Here we have some locally purchased garlic. And here is our garden plan for our fall winter greenhouse. We wanted to take out all the plants from the summer and start brand new for a winter greenhouse to show that, we, that you can grow through winter with new plants in Idaho using the geothermal greenhouse method. Here we've got two rows of garlic, which is a normal setup for short plants, non-climbing plants. You'll see how quick and easy it is to garden using the midnight gardening method. You simply take your seedling here, we're going to go deep with this garlic, pull the dirt forward, and put it back over it. Same thing here, very quick plant a garden doing this method. You notice I'm planting the plants across from me. I'll come back on the other side of this bed and then plant these plants. I don't want to be pulling dirt here, it's too hard to get to. Now that we have the transplants in, we add one quarter of an ounce of nitrogen to the soil around the plants and then water everything in. This gives them a little bit of energy to get started and reduces the transplant shock. We don't add nitrogen to the seeds or the garlic that we planted. Since we basically planted these plants and seeds in dry soil, we didn't get the soil wet, I'm going to give this soil a nice watering through that will settle the soil around the plant roots and around the seeds so we don't have any air pockets down there. Being winter, I won't automatically water every day like I do during the summer. I'll come out here and check moisture in the soil with my finger since that is the best moisture gauge I've ever found, having tested all of them that I know that are out in the market, and uh, then add water accordingly. Here I'm watering with a watering wand. Of course, you can water with the automatic watering, which we'll do after this initial watering. Watering also instantly dissolves the water-soluble nutrients that were given these plants in the Mint Lighter Weekly Feed, the pre-plant nutrient mix, and the nitrogen. So the plants can start taking up these nutrients immediately. It's very important. So watering settles the soil, gives the plant water, and it gives the plant the nutrients. Now that we have everything planted and watered and fertilized, I'm just checking the automatic watering system now and uh, got it set up, get everything pointed in the right direction, making sure it's working. I always double check my work. So everything looks good. So it looks like we're done today with planting and transplanting. So that is our Geo Air Greenhouse update for today. You can hear it's pretty loud in here and uh, it's perfectly warm and comfortable inside the Geo Air Greenhouse. One of the wonders of doing this in the winter in a greenhouse. So, I hope this update has been helpful, answer some of your questions, let you know where we are, what I'm doing, and we'll have more updates as things progress. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And by learning how to grow food year round in whatever climate you're in, you don't have to fear about not having fresh fruit and vegetables for your diet.